amazing scenes, just want to go back really to, to Tuesday night, and those, those amazing scenes of, of, of togetherness, that the team were obviously buzzing, I'm sure they were on the coach as well, has that carried on this week into the training ground? Absolutely, you have to refocus and, and think about the, the best preparation for Villa, but um, it was a great moment, uh, next to our fans, you see the chemistry between players, players of the bench that they haven't played really with very genuine um, happy faces for each other and uh, it was a, a beautiful moment. That was the fifth goal you scored a, in injury time so far this season. So you've got obviously bags of talent, quality players, but that, that fight and that commitment right to the end, is that what titles are made of? Well, I think a team has to have um, an unbelievable desire to win every match and I think we've got that and I think we've shown that time and time again. We could have scored earlier, there were said some moments that um, we could have done better to, to get the third or the fourth goal before, but uh, when it's not the case, the team has resources and has the skill right now to keep believing and, and actually doing what the game requires in that moment to win it. Another massive test, of course, coming up on, on Saturday night. Aston Villa have won every game at home in the Premier League since you were last there. Yeah. What do you make of the, the run that they, they've been on? A huge credit to them, huge credit to Unai and, and the coaching staff for what they've done, the way they've turn things around the way they play. Um, yeah, they're going to be a really tough opponent. It's a, it's a great place to go. It's one of my favorite grounds, very English ground, great atmosphere to play football. So it's going to be a, a big chance for us. Get the inevitable goalkeeper question out of the way. With David, obviously every footballer makes a mistake. As we said before, a goalkeeper makes a mistake. It, it's highlighted, but is it even more highlighted in his case, because of the debate that's going on in terms of your, your number one, and, and has that affected him, do you think? Maybe because of the debate, but when you got his form and what he has achieved since he's with us, and he's uh, really, really impressive. But um, what can I say? You know, I have three great goalkeepers. I'm really happy I have great wingers, that some of them are on the bench, but the questions are not related to them. We have to accept that. But as well, we have to support our players in the best possible way. We have to protect them and we have to get the best out of them. So I will focus much more on that. that every player needs the right support, the right love, and um, and they deserve that. And he's had that this week, I'm sure, from his from his teammates. For us, for sure. And he's going to continue to have that. What did you actually do wrong uh, after your team scored a late, late winner? Uh, all the pressure and the excitement of, of the Premier League this season. Are you not allowed to celebrate? With your players? We are, but I think we have a boundary that maybe we have to extend, or we just need a, a very strong rope um, with the bench. So maybe we, we don't move. But we don't move means we don't move. All of us, we don't move. Because I've seen other managers celebrate even more, like running onto the pitch and apparently not, not be punished. That's so what I say, we. So Not does, me. Does there need to be a pro proper clarity about what you can and can't do? I don't know. Decision is made. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to change it from here to Sunday. Have you heard back from the FA? I know you had your meeting with them yesterday. Yeah. No, we had we have submitted all the evidence, all the opinions, conclusions, context that we had, and we're just waiting to hear. Thanks. Thank you. Becky from the Premier League. Hi, Mikael. Emery, such an experienced manager, is it remotely a surprise to you what he's done with that Villa team? No, I follow him since he was in Almeria. What he's done for every team has been always remarkable. He always improved the players, uh, the team, the, the club, and uh, he's Basque, like I am, and uh, he's a manager that I really admire for what he's done in the game. He's done it in various countries, in different levels, and always been successful. So I'm really happy for him. To have a different team in the top four, someone like Aston Villa to mix things up a bit. Well, it shows the quality of, of the league, and last year there were others, uh, and it shows the competitiveness and the difficulty to be out there, but uh, they fully merit where they are. And for the game at Villa, do you know where you have to watch it yet? Do you know where you'll be seated? I think I'm going to be in director's box. I don't know if it's a discussion we're going to have uh, okay. later on, but let's see. I will have a, a really nice view, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks, Mikhail. OK, I've got Ian from TalkSport. Hi, Mikhail. How are you? Hi. Um, Unai Emery, when he was here, was it a case of wrong time? If he'd have been here another time, would he have done what he's doing at Villa here? Because you obviously rate him as a coach. Everyone rates him as a coach, as an elite coach. 
I don't know the time it was uh, as it was, and I think he still did some very good things um, here, but uh, it's not for me to judge that. What stuff, what stuff that he's done here, or he did here, are you benefiting from? Anything in particular? I don't know. It's uh, well. The first season they had quite a strong season, and uh, and he did it straight away after coming um, from PSG, and um, and he's carried on. After he went to Villarreal, he did incredibly well, and now he's doing really well at Aston Villa. He's got a lot of experience and skill to get the best out of teams. Everyone talks in the Premier League when it comes to strikers about Erling Haaland and maybe Mo Salah. Do you think we're overlooking how good Ollie Watkins is? You'll be up against him tomorrow. Yeah, he's been tremendously consistent over the last few years and um, he's a real threat. How do you stop him? Like with a striker, don't give him the ball in the box. That's his, his main quality. And finally, going back to the other night, your celebration, the yellow card you got. Um, do you think sometimes you're being targeted by referees for giving a yellow card for coming, celebrating? When, I mean, it's human nature after 90 minutes if he gets a winning goal. I don't know how to stop it. It was a really emotional moment. You have everybody bouncing around and you lose sense of where you are, the space that, that you have to be in. And um, yeah, it was unfortunate because now I cannot be next to my team on the touchline. But uh, it's a decision that, that they make. If you look strictly at the rules, yes, we cannot do that. You know, that I think the context is different. And then the we, I think it's very important within that context. We seem to take so much emotion out of football. VAR stops you celebrating a goal instantly. Um, to stop managers and coaches celebrating a win like that. Yeah. After that, straight away, I sit on my seat and I stay still there for 30 seconds, but that after the emotion, you know. So, on the moment, I think it's, it's very difficult to demand that. Okay, Mark for PA. I'm um, Gary. You mentioned there uh, you don't know how to stop celebrating like that, but. Do you want to stop celebrating like that? That's a, great that's a great question. If I was given the opportunity, no. I would like to be there with my players because we work closely every single day to achieve um, what we want, which is to, to win the games in, in whatever manner. And when you get those moments in sports, you should be able to, to do that. But I understand as well that there are sets and boundaries and you have to respect that you are in a way ground. But if I was given the chance, it's a good question. I would be there jumping. You talked about Unai earlier, and obviously we spoke to you before the Bournemouth game about that part of that little corner of Spain that's created so many managers. Unai's a little bit older than, than the rest of you, so when you were first starting out as a coach, was he someone you, you looked up to and wanted to yeah. follow in the footsteps of? Well, I think he's, uh, he's the most experienced and the most successful one, uh, by quite a long distance for everything that he has achieved in the game and, and what he's won. So he's someone that obviously I, I admire, yes. Okay, we'll go to Jordan from the Atlantic. Okay, well, just on Unai, you know, 14 home wins in a row at Aston Villa. What is it about his team tactically that you saw him against Man City the other day? What is it about them that you admire and think has been key to their consistency? Well, tactically, they are really well set up. They do two or three different things. They are really brave to play from the back. They really attract you. There. They have players between the lines that they can really hurt you. They have players in open spaces that are constantly threatening you. And But not only that, I think it's the spirit that they created, the atmosphere, the intensity, and uh, the belief that they have at the moment that um, they can go and, and beat anybody. Because in almost every other metric at the game against Man City, they came out on top. Had you ever seen a Man City team under Pep Guardiola or Pep team beating that comprehensively? Um, it's not for me to judge. I think it was a, a great game of football. Uh, just looking at the top four, then, do you think this is a four-team a four team title race now? Do, do you think we can count some teams out? or you know How does that change compared to last season, whether it's just two? I think when you look at the competition, the results every week, this is so open and it's going to be so open right at the end. Simon? Yeah, Mikhail, how do you think it will impact your team in terms of coaching, managing you not being on the touchline this weekend? Hopefully better, <laughs> and they will play better, and and they will be more positive, and and uh, I can influence with my positive mind towards them. And uh, as well, we have very experienced coaches, Albert, Carlos, Nico will be there um, next to them. And um, we've done it in the past from home, so let's do it now. I was going to say, did that having that sort of COVID game, has that actually sort of helped you prepare for a situation like this where you can't be on the touchline? Well, at least I have a little experience with that and uh, and now it's going to be the second one, but it's much closer, which I think is, is positive. Just team news-wise, is there anything from from Tuesday? I know Martinelli was someone who took a fair yeah. few kicks. Is, is he OK? 
No, I think everybody's going to be okay. And just lastly, on on the defence itself, I know Thomas Partey was someone who sort of filled in in that position. Is there any sort of update on when he might be back? There's a bit of talk maybe for sort of Liverpool Christmas period? We don't know. He's getting um, a very good evolution in the injury, but uh, it's a bit early to um, to get a time frame. Um, that would be incredibly fast if he's able to do that. So we are going to have to wait. We are quite short with five key, key players for us uh, not being available now for a, for a period of time, but uh, we have to continue. Can I have a couple of minutes? Hi. Um, you're obviously going to be sat in the stands watching this game. Are you going to be able to stay in your seat? Or do you think you're going to be up shouting, standing like any other... <laughs> in the director box? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. Never say never, because the game can get very emotional, but I will try not to. Uh, and just building on what Simon was saying about the defence there, you mentioned that maybe you're a bit short in that area of the pitch. With the way you're having to manage minutes for certain players, and obviously now you've got Tommy Asu out and several other big players missing, do you think you've got enough depth in that position going forward throughout the rest of the season? Because obviously there's going to be lots and lots of games that you want no. to go for in every single competition. Let's see, we're going to have to add up. We have what we have right now. It's true that uh, January window is coming up. We would have to assess where the squad is and, and the needs that we have. But uh, at the moment, it's something we cannot change. We have to play all the games now throughout December in the best possible way and, and keep winning games. And just on the January window, obviously you've got Tommy will eventually be back and Urien will eventually be back. They're such versatile players. They can play in so many different positions. Will you be afraid almost to, to bring someone in for fear of maybe taking those guys' place, if that makes sense, for mm. when they come back. Will you have to think about that, or will you just be thinking, the here and now, we need to try and win at the moment? No, we have to consider every scenario. Uh, we need to have a clear time frames as well, when those players are going to be back, in which condition, and to play how many minutes. And, uh, and after we've done all that work, we will try to make uh, the best call for the team.